Okay, now we're going to go through and work several problems. <clears throat> and these are going to be similar to the problems that you will have on your assignments. So this should help you um, as you go through. So the first problem right here, for each rectangle, either the length, width, or area is no unknown. First, calculate the value of the known, I think that should say unknown measure, and then calculate the perimeter. So here we've got our length and our width. We need to find the area. So if you remember, we just multiply those two numbers together. So we're going to do 21 times 15. And when we multiply 21 times 15, we get 315. And then to find the perimeter, we're going to do 2 times 21 plus 2 times 15. And if you think about that, that makes sense. Because if we're going to calculate the perimeter, the perimeter is all the way around. So if you think of this like a building and we're walking 21 feet this way, 15 feet this way, 21 feet this way, and then 15 feet this way, we walked two sets of 21 and two sets of 15. So if we stick this in our calculator, 2 times 21 plus 2 times 15, you get 72. The perimeter here would be 72. Now in this next problem, they gave us the area, but they did not give us this base down here. So I know that my area is 48. I guess that would be the, um, the width. And so, and I know 48 equals eight times the width, right? So now what do I do? I have to work it backwards. So I'm going to divide both sides times eight. And if you remember um, in your multiplication tables, six times eight is 48. So my width is going to be six. So I'm gonna write that in here, here. Now we need to find the perimeter. So remember the perimeter, again, it's going to be two times six plus two times eight. So two times six plus two times eight. And that gives me a perimeter of 20. This last problem for this first, or I guess the last part of the first problem, again, they gave me the area. It's 15.75. And that equals 3.5 times our width. So again, we're gonna have to divide. And 15.75 divided by 3.5 gives me, I did not type that in right gives me 4.5, so my width is 4.5. Now to find my perimeter, again we'll do two times 4.5 plus two times 3.5. And let's see, whoops, what we get. You gotta make sure you are uh, putting in the right things here we get 16 so our perimeter would be 16 right there now this last problem it says calculate the perimeter and area of a rectangle that is 11 meters long and 5 meters wide what I like to do for problems like this is just sketch you know the the picture so we can get a good understanding so this is 11 this is 5 that makes it a lot that makes a lot more sense in my brain once I have this little picture here. <clears throat> so the perimeter, now this makes this really easy, right? So it's just two times 11 plus two times five, and I believe we'll get 32. And then the area is just gonna be five times 11, which is 55. So when it's just a word problem, I can, I can understand how that can be confusing. Draw your picture, always draw a picture. Now on to some squares. So here we have, uh, we need to find the unknown value, the side length, the area, and the perimeter. Um, 
<laughs> in each one. So here we know the side length. So since this is a square, if this is five, this is also going to be five. And how do we find the area of a square? Well, we just square it. Five squared, five times five is 25. And how do we find the perimeter? It's going to be four times our side length, which in this case is five. So that gives me 20. Now, this one's a little more complicated. They give us our area is 169. So that equals my side length squared. And we've talked about how do we unsquare something. We do the opposite of squaring, and that's square rooting. If you can't remember that, your calculator has this little cheat for us. So if we look right here for our squared button, if I hit second squared, then I can just type in the number. I get a square root, and that gives me a side length of 13. And now to find my perimeter, I just multiply that times four. And I believe you get 52. It's going to be 52. Now it says calculate the perimeter and area of a square that has a side length equal to nine inches. Again, we're just gonna jot down, sketch a little picture. So that's nine and that's nine. So my area is going to be nine squared. Well, that's just 81. And my perimeter is going to be four times nine, which is going to be 36. So once we have the picture, that makes our life much easier. Got a couple more problems over here. Things get a little more complicated on this one. We've got this big composite figure. A composite figure is just a figure that's made up of more than one shape. So we've got lots of squares and rectangles here. So the first thing it says is calculate the unknown links A and B. So how can we figure out what A is? Well, let's see here. I know that this whole length here is 14, but I know this part of it's going to be 10. That leaves this right here as a four. Um, if this whole thing right here is 35 and I subtract off this part right here, that would give me what A is. So I'm going to do 35 minus 4 minus 12. Then I'm left with 19. So that means that this part right here has to be 19 because I've got 4, I've got 12, and 19, and that's going to equal 35. So we're going to do the same kind of idea here. Let's see here. Oh. Uh, for B, I know that this is 10. Um, I also know that this is 10. I know that this is 5. Oh, so since this is 5 and this is 8, this part right here is going to be a 3. That means that this right here will be 7. And I have this part plus this part, so that makes this a 17. So A equals 19, B equals 17. Okay, the next part, it says the homeowners would like to install indoor-outdoor carpeting on the enclosed porch. How many square feet of indoor-outdoor carpeting will be needed? So, if we're installing carpet, that's going to be an area problem. <clears throat> and so, we would just need to multiply the two parts together. Well, this part's 10 and this part's 10, so this is a square. So the area is going to equal 10 squared, which is 100. Uh, the homeowners would like to install wood flooring in the dining room. How many square feet of wood flooring are, uh, will be needed? So again, since we're installing carpeting, that's the flat area. So the dining room, the dimensions are 8 by 19. So our area would be 8 times 19, and when I put that in my calculator, I get 152. The homeowners would like to install tile in the kitchen. How many square feet of tile would be needed? <clears throat> so again, um, in the kitchen, I would need to find out the area. It looks like we've got 12 plus four. So it looks like this part is 16 and this is still gonna be eight. So the area is going to be eight 
times 16 for the kitchen, which gives us 120 square feet. They're going to install loop carpeting in the living room. How many square feet of loop carpeting would they need? So if you can see we're right here. The living room's a little bit different. So we've got different parts. So I'm going to cut this little rectangle off of this right here. And this is just going to be seven times four. So the area of the small part is seven times four Plus, we need to find this bigger part of the living room, which would just be 12 times 17. And so we can just put that in our calculator. And they have 232 square feet. Our last question says, what is the total area of the first floor? Well, we found the area of each part. So now we can just take these and add them all together. So we have 100 plus 152 plus 120 plus 232. The total square feet would be 604 square feet.